Welcome back. Uh, good to see you again. I'm Peter Devine, the host of uh, this series of presentations on elementary physics. Today we are going to explore the so-called parallelogram law of forces. <coughs> Basically, this law says that if I have a force of this magnitude in this direction represented by a line of this length, and I have uh, another force uh, on, this, on, an, on an object represented by uh, the length and direction as shown in this particular segment, that the sum of these two forces will be equivalent to, will be equivalent to a force that uh, is the completion line of this triangle, but they call it the parallelogram law of forces because it's really a diagonal of a parallelogram. So that is how effectively we can find out the net resulting force when we have two forces acting. And likewise, we can break a single force in a particular direction, represented by this line, into two uh, forces which, if acting on the same body, will have an equivalent effect and those forces will be shown in direction and magnitude by the relative lengths of these lines in this illustration. As you may have noticed, when you look at a force, there's no line there uh, with a magnitude. This is just a graphic representation. Uh, so to show that this is true, there was a scientist uh, named Simon Stebbin, a Dutch scientist, and he made the following illustration of this. Uh, he would draw two, uh, two inclined planes back to back. And then he put a chain around them. This is a closed chain. He imagined that this would be able to roll back and forth on this um, inclined plane. And he said that since the chain is, uh, is uniform in terms of its uh, weight per unit length, that there would be no reason for it to go one way or another. It would just sit there in equilibrium. And when he looked at this part of the chain, he noticed that it's symmetrically uh, arranged so that therefore the forces that the chain acts on on this side and this side are equal. So uh, if the chain were erased, there would, uh, these segments would be in equilibrium because it was just removing equal sort of forces acting on either side. So, uh, if we take Stevinus' idea, and call him Stevinus also because that was the kind of Latin, Latinized uh, name that you might give him. And if we take his idea and turn this into a vertical piece like this, like a regular inclined plane, then once again, these pieces should be in equilibrium. But what is interesting is that now that we have a vertical fall here, this weight is exactly the force that is keeping this other part of the chain from falling down the incline. So uh, our first chore here is to simply write an equation which will look rather commonsensical. We know that the weights, uh, the weights of either of these are proportional to their weights. So if I call this W1, and I call this L1, and I call this W2, and I call this L2, L2 and L1 being the respective lengths, this is a right triangle here. Uh, I can simply write um, W1 over 
W2 is equal to L1 over L2. The ratio of these different weights is proportional to the is equal to the ratio of their respective lengths. Now if I solve for W1, which is actually the force holding this one up, I will get W1 is equal to W2 times L1 over L2. And remember, W1 then is simply the actual force that is keeping this weight from sliding down the inclined plane. Finally then, if I have another drawing of the inclined plane, I just put that little weight there. Imagine that it's on frictionless rollers, frictionless rollers, and you know, if I have a pulley like this, I can somehow someone pulling on that end, uh, keeping this in place. The question is, what is this tension here? Um, I'm going to call this the force F. Well, we now have a formula for that. Let's call this W. And now we can say that F, which would have been the weight hanging at this end, is simply the weight times L1 over L2. This has to be a right triangle here that we're, we're talking about. So there's our simple formula for finding the tension on an inclined plane uh, that will hold a weight in place. Very simple formula, but we're going to use this formula next time to explore the parallelogram law of forces. So, thank you.